Hey everyone, Scott here from Norebo.com, and today I'm going to teach you how to create a, I guess a bare aluminum texture for an airplane. And I guess you can apply this bare aluminum texture to pretty much anything. Well, pretty much anything shaped in the form of a cylinder, but for the purposes of this video, I am going to put a bare aluminum texture on this Boeing 707 here on the bottom and I'm going to use this DC-10 illustration as a reference. Now, these are both illustrations that I've created, and these are PSD files with all the layers, uh, everything on an individual layer, so it's gonna be pretty easy to work with. Anyway, enough talking, I'll just get right into it and I'll show you the process, which I will say is relatively simple. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this DC-10 here. I'm going to turn everything off except for the fuselage here. And I'm going to turn off all the layers of the bare aluminum texture so it's just all white. And we're gonna start with that. So I'm gonna go down to the 707. I'm gonna turn off all the layers. As you can see, I got a little bit of a darker shading on the DC-10 fuselage, but that's okay. We can, we can even it up as we're going through the process here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to see what layer we need to create first. And if we go on the DC-10 here, um, it's going to be, you see that highlight I'm turning on and off right there on the fuselage right here. And I'm gonna to toggle it on and off, you can see it. Let's create that for the 707. So let's go down here, create a new layer. Actually, you know what, to make this easier, I'm gonna jump over to Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so now I've got that shape into Adobe Illustrator right now. I just basically did a screenshot and yeah, just paste it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly draw that shape of the, the highlight. And I'm just gonna follow the shape of the fuselage there slightly. Hold down shift to get that straight. And then just follow the shape of the, the fuselage a little bit. I can't even say the word fuselage, 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 but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna come down here and then continue. Doesn't need to be perfect. And like so. And make that white. So that'll be our highlight. And again, if this doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will very soon. So I've got that vector shape now. I'm gonna Command C to copy it. Go back over to Photoshop. I'm going to Command V to paste it. Let's paste the smart object just to get that. And it's kind of hard to see because it's it's a white object on a white aircraft fuselage. So um, I'm gonna scale that down just a little bit, like so. Oops, like that. Just thin it out, and I'm going to scale it a little bit more to horizontally just to get it like so. Now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to copy that layer, I'm going to rasterize it, and then I'm going to blur it out. So rasterize layer, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just trying to match what I see here up in the, the DC-10 fuselage. So you can see it's really soft. It's not very well defined. And I think that is gonna work like 27.5 somewhere around there, so. So yeah, we've got that done now. And what is the next layer that we need to create? So we need to create the top gradient there. And it's not actually gray. Let's just zoom in on that really close so I can get that exact color. Use the eyedropper tool, and that's the color I'm gonna use. As you can see, it's kind of like a, a blue gray, just a little bit like a really cool gray. And that'll work very nicely. So as you can see, it's just, it's just a gradient along the top just to give some reflection and some, some shape to that, uh, the top of the fuselage. So now I'm going to select the 707 fuselage by holding down command and then clicking on this, on the layer icon here. Create a new layer and static gradient down a little bit. That works. And if it's too dark, it's okay because you can always, you can always turn down the opacity and I'm going to create another layer and just kind of use the brush here to, to fake and turn the corner and make it a little bit larger. I'm going to go with like a 500 pixel 
There we go. That's good. And in order to match what I'm seeing here on the DC-10, uh, you can see you got the same color on the bottom, and it's very dark. So I'm going to continue that um, in the same form, in the same style here for the 707 on the bottom. I am going to select the fuselage again, create a new layer, and I'm going to use the gradient tool, and I'm just going to go up like that. Yeah, that's nice. It looks like it's starting to look like a really nice metal texture now, which is really, really nice. So I got to get back to my highlight and bring that to the top, show it so it shines through like that. Yeah, that's that's really nice, looking good. Okay, what's next? Um, okay, so now we've got a horizontal blur that goes all the way through the center of the fuselage on the DC-10 like that. You can see I'm turning it on and off and you can kind of see what we need to do there. So it's basically a, a blurred straight line. And the best way to recreate that is to, uh, let's make a new layer. Let's use our brush tool. Uh, before we do that, let's um, grab the color of that. So I'm using the eyedropper tool and I want to grab right in the center there. And um, yeah. And that's our color. I'm going to go a little bit darker because it just seems it just seems darker. And again, we can always adjust the opacity once we once we get it. So I'm going to use some artistic license and create more of a cool color. So add some blue into that. And now let's grab our brush. And it looks like for the size of this particular illustration, 280 pixels works well. And it, and it's just going to depend on the size of your illustration. Uh, see, it's too big. So let's go back to maybe 180. And again, we can blur this out too. And that's fine. Roughly something like that. And let's blur that out just a little bit. So go to uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And yeah. So the same setting that I had for that white highlight seems to be working well for this. I'm going to leave it right at that. 24.7. Now let's do some trimming. So I'm going to use Command Select the fuselage there. You can see the marching ants around it. Select Inverse. And I've got the that blurred layer selected. And now I'm going to hit Delete. It goes away. But we're still not done yet. We need to blur or we need to blend that a little bit better. So let's um, use the eraser tool and then turn down the size to around maybe it's like 430 pixels and just sort of just just sort of erase that away and just get a nice point there. So it goes to the, the nose and then in the rear we're going to just kind of just erase it up so it matches the shape of the fuselage there. And I think that's going to work well. Let's bring that down a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's starting to look like metal. And what else we got? So well, we've got a hard reflection line to do next. And we're going to go back over to Adobe Illustrator to get that to the same illustration I was working on before. Um, let me go back. So it's actually going to come down, follow right through right through the middle. And you got to kind of be wary of the shape of the cylinder and how it points at the nose, or points through the nose, and then curves up towards the back of the fuselage, like so. And then we're just going to make that black so we can see it, make sure there's no outline. And I might actually just tweak that just slightly. And again, you don't have to be, this there's, I mean, it's, it's really, this isn't rocket science. You just do whatever you think looks right. So I'm going to Command C, copy, and I'm going to go back to my Adobe Photoshop illustration, and then within the Boeing 707 fuselage, I'm going to paste that in, and I'm only going to use this as a guide. So import it as a smart object, and just kind of get it looking halfway decent. You may have to adjust the opacity down so you can see underneath it and you can see what that reflection is going to do. I think that works pretty well just like that. Now, as I said, this is only going to be a guide. So let's get the color first of all. That looks good. You can see it's actually just a light blue color. It's, it's, it's a very cool gray, actually. 
So let's turn this layer off, create a new layer, command, click on the thumbnail of the, uh, of the layer, and then you'll get the marching ants around it. And we're going to fill that with a gradient going down. So gradient tool, and then something like, maybe that's too much. I don't need to go down too far. And I might need to put the, uh, the multiply blending mode on that just so I can get that hard reflection. Yeah, that's looking good. That's looking really good. It's looking like metal. We may have to adjust the opacity a little bit, bring that down, and looking good. Now, let's do some trimming. Command, click on the icon of the fuselage, select inverse, go back to the layer of the hard reflection, make sure it's selected, delete, boom, done. All right. Now it's time to add the little details. We've basically got the metal texture and that is it. But this is the part that I really like, which is going in and adding the little details. So let's turn on all the layers for both aircraft and go down to the 707 here, turn on these layers and you can see we're, we're getting there. We're, we've got a ways to go yet. So first thing that I see, I see that we need to get a darker shadow underneath the aircraft so it looks more round and the way I'm going to do that I'm, I'm going to want to come up quite a bit so I'm going to select the fuselage uh, command click on the um, the icon of the fuselage there let's create a new layer I want to make this pretty dark so I'm just going to use black and I'm going to do a gradient up maybe that's too much so let's move this layer up now uh, it's just a matter of using the eraser tool to trim that away. Again, this is just it's trial and error. Just have to work it until you get something that works that looks that looks good. And basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that black. Actually, I think that's okay. I think that's really okay. Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and I'm going to time lapse this and do some fine tuning here before we move on to some of the details. So bear with me here. Okay, so that's looking better. And again, this is just all personal preference. And basically, as I was working on it, I was seeing a lot of things that I, I just wanted to just tweak and modify. And it's <laughs> just the way that it goes when you do these kind of illustrations. So I didn't really do anything in that time lapse that, um, that was anything special or important. Uh, it's just fine tuning it to my own personal preference. So, and again, maybe what I've done so far is not what you like, but that's okay. So let's just keep moving along here. And this is really where the fun begins, adding sectioning or panel discoloration. I don't know why this is so fun, but you'll see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just use the one of the, the part lines in the fuselage or one of the section lines as a guide. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle based on that line, just going off to the right. And I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to do a gradient, and you're going to see what's going to happen here. So I'm going to go like that. It may not look like much right now, but then watch this. Boom. Panel discoloration. Let's trim away the excess. Select inverse. And there you go. That looks, looks really nice. I think it's a little bit too dark. Yeah, so yeah, let's pick another panel maybe this panel right here and let's do the same thing so you're going to use the marquee tool go down the section line of the fuselage and just draw it over like so create a new layer use the gradient tool and then just draw the gradient across like that and then we are going to just tone that down a little bit just ever so slightly just so it looks like it's got some panel discoloration going on there and I think that's fine. I think it's a little bit too strong. It, it goes for too long. I think that works. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to erase some of the um, the other one so that that looks pretty good. And let's make sure we trim away the excess. So select the fuselage, select inverse, and delete. Let's add one more right here.
add a new layer, do the gradient. And that's good enough. Command select the fuselage, select inverse, delete. Now let's add even more little detail. Um, this is really going to make it sing now. I'm going to let's do a screenshot of the entire thing. Or let me say this as a JPEG, and then we're going to bring it over into Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so now that we are in Illustrator, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly mimic the shape of this reflection. I kind of messed up. I should have used the same shape, but since I modified it in Photoshop by adjusting the scale and, and whatnot, I, I can't use the exact same shape, but it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get this a little bit, uh, a little bit close. Doesn't matter. I think that's good enough for who it's for. And what this is going to be is the glossy highlight, which you'll see in a moment. So I'm going to make that black so I can see it. Command C. Let's go back to Photoshop. Command V. Bring that in as a smart object so I can use it as a guide. And let's get that into place. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to match the reflection that I had built before. So it's going to be like like so. And it doesn't need to be perfect. I mean, if you look at metal textures, they are far from perfect. There's all kinds of imperfections and there's, you know, it's just, it just doesn't need to be exact. So I'm going to turn that layer off. I'm going to create a new layer. Command select that vector smart object. Select inverse. Get a white color on a gradient. And we are going to add some bling. We're just going to go up like that. And I think that's going to work well. And it'll look a lot better if we put this above the windows. So let's put it above the windows layer. There it is. Yeah. And it's a little bit too strong right now, but that's okay. We can dial it back. Let's just get it to the point where it looks halfway decent. We're going to do some erasing just to get the, uh, the front end of the aircraft not looking so glossy because it doesn't need to be. It's only in the center where it's really, should be really hot. So in order to make this reflection even stronger, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to create a, a hard reflection down using that same vector smart object guide going down. I'm just going to use a black gradient going down. And it's too strong obviously, but let's just like so, it's probably, still too strong like that and I think that's going to be good enough for who it's for select the fuselage select inverse and now let's go back up to these layers that I created to trim away so it's not on the outside like that I think that's pretty good just like that oh the only other thing that I see that we need to do is we need to do the uh, vertical stabilizer so that's pretty simple too. So I'm going to select the vertical stabilizer, create a new layer, and we're going to sample the color on the DC-10. And we're just going to do a, a simple gradient from the back going forward up at about a 45 degree angle. Too much. Let's do it again. Just a linear gradient. Somewhat like that. I think that's going to work fine. I mean, you're not going to get a lot of reflection on that vertical stabilizer anyway. So there you have it. That is the process for creating metal textures for an aircraft, uh, for any aircraft template, any side view template, or anything in the shape of a cylinder. It's really not that hard. And what I'm probably going to do now is just to spend a few minutes to clean it up afterwards. But for the most part, that's it. It's that simple. And if you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them as fast as I can. And yeah, as a reminder, all my aircraft templates are available on norebo.com, my website, my blog, totally for free. Uh, you can just go over there and get them. I'll put a link in the description to this exact template right here. The one that I started with, the all white 707. So if you want to 
grab that for yourself and, and practice and follow along exactly how I did on this demo, you can do that. So anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one.